me to the bar. I need a drink. Tina, it's a little uh, early for you to be hitting the sauce, isn't it? Actually, I think it's a little late. I'm sorry. I know you got better things to do than listen to my problems. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on here. Now, I wouldn't let a stranger drink alone in the state you are in. Now, come on. Tell me what's wrong. Have a seat. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad. Yes, it can't. It always is. Let me see. I haven't seen much of you lately, so I can only guess. Could this be about court? No. Uh, well, it can't be about money. No, it's not money. It's Bo. Bo? Bo Buchanan? What's he have to do with you? He wants to marry me. Look, I know it's a bit of a surprise because we kept it such a secret, but it's not a secret anymore. In fact, it's a joke. It's a big joke on me. Listen, uh... I really don't want to hear any more of this. Thank you very much, Janelle. We were going through the ceremony. I mean, we were almost done with it and everything, and Cord just barged right in. And then before I knew it was happening, Cord was fighting Bo, and Bo was fighting Cord, and then Bo walked out on me. Tina, I really, mean, it was I just have... terrible. And, he, and you know, then he sent me this note begging for me to come see him today. And then and he was begging me to marry him right away. I mean, even today. And But then I gave him the ring back and stuff, and I told him, of course I couldn't marry him today. I gave him the ring, and now I think maybe I made a mistake. I don't know, Max. You know me so well. Do you think I did something stupid again? Are you finished? Yeah, I want your advice. If I believe that for a moment, I wouldn't want to spank you and send you packing. I thought you were going to be sympathetic. I was when I thought you were in trouble, but as it turns out, you're just being Tina again. Playing one man against another again. It wasn't like that. Oh, wasn't it? What are you doing right now but playing up to me to get my advice and my sympathy? How do you think that makes me feel knowing you bounce from me to Gordon out of Bo Buchanan? I'm sorry, Max. I didn't mean to fall for both. You don't mean any of the things you do, but you do them all just the same. I'm sorry, Tina. Find some other shoulder to cry on. Mine is soaked. Fine, go ahead. Leave me. Everybody else did. No, I mean it. You go on. I can be strong. I'm just going to manage perfectly fine without anybody. I've never had to do it before, but I guess I can now. When you cry, here, blow your nose. Max, what am I going to do? I just want to be happy. Tina, happiness is not some golden apple you pick from a tree. It comes when you're not looking for it. You just got to be yourself and do what's right for you. I thought you were right for me. And Cord... Bo? Did it ever occur to you that maybe you don't have to be married to be happy? Why don't you think about just playing the field for a while? Who knows? Let all the eligible bachelors come up to you for a change. Lose Bo? Bo Schmo, if he's right for you, you'll, you'll know it. Now, why don't you just be good to Tina for right now? Ever thought of becoming a substitute sister? Couldn't pass the physical. Listen, you keep the hanky. I'll put it on your tab. Thanks, Max. Why, Cindy, dear, how long have you been standing there? Not long. Why? Oh, nothing. Uh, you should have come in. We weren't discussing anything of importance, were we, Bo? Uh, no, no, just business, that's all. Oh, you two have been doing a lot of business lately. Seems like every time I turn around, you're here, Bo. Yes, well, there is a reason for that. Yes, I'm back on the board of directors of Santa's Chemical. Ebo was kind enough to allow me to advise him on some uh, management problems. Yes, yes, I can always learn from an old hand like Elizabeth. Well, I don't mean to interrupt your powwow, but since you're here, Bo, I was wondering if I might have a word with you in private. Oh, dear, that does sound serious. Oh, surely I can listen in. We're all friends here. Well, if it's something that you want to uh, speak to me about alone, um... Uh... I guess we can always go someplace else. What about lunch at Holden Towers? That won't be necessary. You go ahead and have your little chat. I'll be in the library if you need me. You'll have to forgive Elizabeth. Uh, she means well, but sometimes she's a little bit nosy. <laughs> now, what did you want to speak to me about? Patrick. Oh? What about him? 
Well, I've done all I can to warn people about his escape. But I've exhausted my resources in trying to find him. Which brings me to your generous offer. I was wondering, Bo, if you're still... If I'm still interested in helping you find your brother? Yes, yes. More than ever. But I'm a little bit uh, confused, Cindy. If you're so afraid of Patrick, um, why is it so urgent to find him now? Well, it's something personal. Something very special I have to say to him. Hmm. Well, I don't want to be one to pry, but if I'm going to be helping you find him, then uh, maybe I should know what it is that you have to tell him. Wesley, you're better than hot brie, baby. Oh, yeah, well, there's <laughs> nothing to it. <laughs> I knew all of Dr. Lambert's uh, inactive files were in the research room, and all it took was the key. Oh, this is just great. I mean, mm. with this file on Patrick London yeah. and his time in the clinic, I'll be able to get just what I need. Uh-huh. Miss Kramer, what's the matter? Well, there's only numbers in this file. Oh, yeah. Well, all of Dr. Lambert's records are written in her own personal code. Code? Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't read it, but the computer can. See, when the clinic went high tech, huh? Dr. Lambert insisted that everything be kept for her eyes only, hers and Bill's. Bill's? Bill's a computer. Uh -huh. Can you talk to Bill? Heavens, no. Oh. But I'm sure that Dr. Lambert can get you a, a translated printout. I do, you want me to page her? No, no, actually, that's okay. I, I wouldn't want to disturb her. Um, mm. You know, I can just take it. I'll find another Bill. <laughs> oh, no, you can't be serious. You can't take the files away. But, Wesley, we're investigative reporters, remember? Yeah. Well, Wesley, what are you doing here with Mrs. Jenkins? Mrs. Jenkins, no, you must be mistaken, doctor. This is Melinda Kramer, you know, the Wesley. famous TV journalist. Didn't you tell the doctor you, you're doing a TV report? Oh, I guess it must have slipped their minds. Well, perhaps now you'll tell me who you are and what it is you're doing here. The inspection, white gloves still white. Nothing so uh, drastic. I just wanted to show Megan that your hotel is going to be the perfect location for fraternity room. I don't want to lie to you, Mr. Stone. I would enjoy seeing the Holden Towers on national TV, but I would really hate to force Miss uh, Gordon to lower her standards. No, Megan loves the place, don't you, Megan? I've stayed worse in summer stock, yes, but there are going to have to be a few changes. Will there? Yes. Can you remember them, or should I have my production assistant prepare a list for you? I'm making... No, 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 talk away. I doubt I shall forget a single pearl that drips from your lips. Well, first of all, the food is definitely going to have to be catered. I've seen your menu, and I've sampled your so-called specials. Inadequate is putting it kindly. Yeah, Megan has a very a particular taste. She's sort of an elective vegetarian. Oh, that makes sense. You see, I eat meat. Most of our customers are meat eaters. In fact, the critic at the banner who gave us a four stars is also. But if you would prefer to have fresh mown hay and wild onions, I'm sure we can arrange that. Good. Now, if we can get onto the shooting schedule. No, not the yet. There's also a matter of decor that needs to be discussed. Oh, yes, I uh, heard the crack about the color clashing with your eyes. May I suggest new contact lenses? The furnishings look like cheap spaceship modern. Your personal taste, I suppose. Miss Gordon, I do believe you are right. Our little hotel just is not up to you. May I suggest the hotel down at the end of the block? Public health has shut it down, but I'm sure I can get you in with a recommendation. Mag Megan is I don't kidding. need your recommendation, Mr. Holden, or your sleazy hotel, or for that matter, anything that you have to offer me. I'll be at the studio, Randy. At least it's clean. Mm -hmm. Just, just give me a <laughs> I'm sorry, Bo, but the message is private between my brother and me. Well, I wouldn't want to invade your privacy, but since I'm going to be helping you find Patrick, uh, maybe I should know why it's so important. Well, it's something I feel I owe him. See, after all the terrible things Patrick did, I wanted to forget that he ever existed. But he's still my brother, and I couldn't stop thinking about him. I'm sure he couldn't stop thinking about you, too. 
Well, I thought about all the pain and confusion he must have felt for five long years in prison. Yeah, that must have been real hell, huh? And then coming back and losing the woman he loved to another man, that, that must have been terrible. Terrible. So that's why I felt like I had to find him and talk to him. Not to forget all the horrible things he did, but to forgive him at least. Maybe it'll do him some good, I don't know. What do you think? I think forgiveness is the highest form of human love and the hardest. That's what they always taught us in Sunday school, right? Yeah. Well, then you know why I have to find him. To tell him I forgive him and... And what? Is there something else? Well, I've been in touch with Kate. In fact, I saw her in New York when she was back briefly from her research. You saw her? I mean, uh, what would Kate have to do with uh, Patrick now? I mean, she must hate him, right? Well, Patrick probably thinks that too. But Kate and I had a lot of long talks, and let's just say I'm sure my brother would want to know what his lost love has to say about him. Yeah, I'm sure he would. That's really all I feel free to say at the moment. Uh, are you still willing to help me? Yes, yes, just like I said before, more than ever. And I will do everything in my power to make sure that you and Patrick find each other. Somehow I feel that's not a hollow promise. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bo. Well, You've given me new hope. I'm just glad that I could help out. I'm going to uh, make a few calls, and as soon as I hear something, I'll let you know. I'll be waiting. Thanks again. Dr. Lambert, I'm sorry. I thought you knew. Otherwise, I never would have let her take... It's quite all right, Wesley. Go back to your work. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Actually, Dr. Lambert, there's a very simple Dear, explanation why don't you let me have No. This? By all means, go ahead, Mrs. Jenkins, Ms. Kramer, whoever you are. Go on. Kramer. My name's Melinda Kramer. Wesley was right. Marie. Now, come on. I mean, do we, I think we should just tell her the truth. John, this is John, my fellow journalist. <laughs> we are here uh, because we're doing a story on an expose on phony mental clinics like this. Phony. Why don't you just settle down? No, I think we should just get it all out. I mean, if she's got something to hide, we should give her a chance to tell the story. Get out. Get out before I have you Dr. Dr. Lambert, I, I'm sorry, but my, my wife has a very vivid imagination. You should see her some of her fantasies sometimes, but uh, I assure you. John, I'm come on. You don't have to beg. I mean, if she wants to go on the air and say that she has nothing to say, then it's her funeral. It's fine. Now, come on. Let's just go. Oh. What's this? This is one of my files. Well, not anymore. It's ours now. Go! Come back here. Do you hear me? Come back here. Security, close all the exits. A couple just left my office. I want them brought back here right away. 